Whether it's the graceful lines of a coach-built classic on the show field, or the works of artists displaying their automotive interpretations, there's no lack of art at the Keeneland Concours. We had a chance to meet some of this year's featured artists and to watch spectators take a trip down memory lane as they caught sight of some fondly remembered cars from their pasts. The owners of these great cars are happy to share stories with fellow car lovers. We invite artists for several reasons. It's another form, it is art, the automobile is art, but we feel like it's another thing that we can bring to the show that would enable you to see that, wow, the lines of this automobile, the beauty of, of the sculpting that, that they have. So it's, it's just another form of art, another form of the Concorde. A familiar face found in the paddock during race days can also be seen painting on the show field during the Keeneland Concours. We had a chance to speak with Peter Williams, the unofficial artist in residence at Keeneland while he was painting a 1909 Buick Model 10. I'm known here uh, for my equine, equine work, but um, you know, I, I painted many, many different categories and, and uh, venues. I love the old, the really ancient cars. They have so much character. I'm a Model T enthusiast. I go back to New Zealand where I have uh, four Model Ts and uh, we do rallies. Truthfully, I really enjoy the interaction with, with, with people because painting from life um, One, one is, is limited in, in the time, you know, and it's not going to be here all day, which encourages you to paint quickly, which I think is the essence. Because otherwise, if there is no urgency, you can go on dotting the I's and crossing the T's, and it becomes like the, the, pick, the, the story where you never get to the punchline. But, but there is no right or wrong, and, and uh, you know, there's room for every type of painting. I try and keep true to the uh, to the form of the car because that's you know that doesn't change. The hills and the trees change from year to year, and, uh, but but I don't believe the subject is there to dictate to you. I think uh, it's there to help you be creative. Picasso summed it up. He he, he said that um, the measure of one's success is in the number you fool. And uh, God knows he fooled a lot of people. <laughs> These funny things that have wheels and motors and stuff are such a huge part of our culture, not only from an economic sense, a lot of our development through life is really formed by these amazing uh, inventions called automobiles. That you're a very small piece of the history of that automobile that represents either um, a portion of our history in our country, Packards, Cadillacs, that type of thing. Uh, it, it represents a part of our history that if you're growing up in the 70s, the, the automobiles really reflected what, what, what our country was and what we were doing and where we were going and that type of thing. And uh, so I think it's hugely important to share those things with people, with children, with uh, with people that have, again, fond memories. What a delight to trigger that type of response out of an individual that, that uh, came to a car show. And uh, so that's really our job. And so it allows us to, to tell a story. At the Concours, we found that owners and exhibitors are eager to share their memories and love of automobiles, whether it's on the show field or in the car paddocks. Of course, I'm a retired Kentucky State Trooper. I went into service in 1983 and retired in 2002. Uh, in, the, in 1990, I was assigned to drive one of these KSP Mustangs. I drove a 1990 model and uh, drove that for a couple of years before I became a detective. And just prior to my retirement, uh, I found, uh, found this 1985 Mustang down in Lincoln County, owned by a private individual. 
It had been uh, sold at auction in 95 as surplus. And I bought it and uh, I didn't have to restore it because the car was in pretty much original condition other than the equipment on the inside. And I gathered up uh, all the original equipment that would be uh, would have been in this car when it was in service. Because it is uh, pretty rare in, in, in uh, 85, they only bought KSP, uh, only bought 10 of these cars, and uh, so they are pretty rare. They were pretty fast for their day. Uh, they were fun to drive. This was my grandparents' 1956 Sedan DeVille that they bought new, ordered it in the end of 55, and received it in February of 56, driven only by a little old lady. She was about five foot tall. She sat on a pillow, looked through the steering wheel as she drove it. And I remember it from my childhood. I called it the bus because my siblings went away on the yellow bus and this was my yellow bus. It's definitely a family car. It was passed on to my mother when my grandmother could no longer drive. And then it was passed on to me. And about that time, my niece was 13 and she sidled up to me and said, isn't this a matriarchal car? Don't I get it next? So I told her she had to learn to take care of it or marry somebody that could take care of it.